What's up internet, it's your soul here and I put together a video a few days ago explaining why the money system is evil uh, basically according to empirical scientific data as much as anything else when you follow it through and you know that's a subject which the Steam blockchain apparently was interested in and that post reached the top three, top four position on the whole Steam blockchain for a few days um, however YouTube it's had about 55 views that, that video and, you know, that's partially because I get reach restricted on YouTube and probably partially because people just don't want to watch that kind of thing. They don't want to be told that they're participating in evil or they just assume that it can't be true or something like that. So anyway, I just saw this story which feeds into um, what I was talking about there. And as you can see, this is from CNN uh, basically saying, uh, this is actually from January, saying that the top 26 billionaires on the planet own $1.4 trillion as much as 3.8 billion other people. Now, you know, you've got to bear in mind that, first of all, whatever public figures there are about people's wealth is not the actual figure. Um, and, the, you know, generally speaking, there's a lot of wealth that's hidden away that people that do these kinds of reports don't know about. So the figure could actually be quite different. It could be actually much worse, to be honest. But, um, but let's go with this figure for now. So one of the um, points about this, obviously, the obvious point is that it's basically showing you how wealth inequality, how, how insane it is that, that you can have 26 people who collectively have as much money as 3.8 billion people, pretty much half the planet. Uh, I mean, you know, that sounds like a script from a dystopian novel, uh, except for it's real. <laughs> and what often comes up in response to this from people who are kind of deflecting away from it for their own reasons is that these billionaires don't have that amount of money in liquid assets and they're tied up in stocks and so on so if they tried to sell them that's not actually what they'd get well that may be true and yeah it may be the case that they can't just go into a shop tomorrow with you know 500 billion dollars but to spend but in reality they don't need to do they because what are you going to buy with 500 billion dollars i mean you know that you can, there's nothing you can buy in the usual commercial world that 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 has that sort of price tag uh you know maybe you can buy companies or even a nation possibly <laughs> all the land is a nation or something like that but um in reality you just don't there's no practical use for that amount of money uh, other than as a, a weight to allow you to continue to control populations basically and you know and get other people to do your bidding and that's really what this is about money began allegedly the story goes by positive thinkers <laughs> that money was there as a convenient way for trading to help people trade but when you've got x billion dollars and a billion dollars is vastly larger number than a million dollars i mean it's for many people a million dollars is a huge amount of money but a billion dollars or a billion pounds or whatever is is just immense so to have multiple billions for one person to have multiple billions you know that's that's a scale that most people can't even really visualize accurately anyway um, it's more money than realistically any one person can spend in their lifetime and you've got these people who have got that times many times so what does this really say well considering that uh, you know a large percentage of the population of the planet are at a poverty subsistence level struggling to get by it really says to me that First of all, the people that created this system and maintain it, this financial and economic system, are not doing it for the benefit of humanity. They're doing it for the benefit of themselves, often at the expense of humanity. I mean, it's not, it doesn't benefit me to have half the world poor. I don't intend to exploit them. But if I did intend to exploit them, then I could say it benefits me. In reality, it doesn't really benefit me, even if I intend to exploit them, because then I have to avoid half the world. Um, <laughs> unless I've got such good mind control aka marketing and public relations that uh, everyone thinks I'm a hero through my philanthropy or whatever then they think I really care uh, unless that's the case then I'm not going to be people's favourite person unless they're just trying to get something out of me in which case you know, I wouldn't really want to be around them anyway because it's out of balance and, and you know, obviously being a billionaire on a planet with very few billionaires is out of balance there's no question about that and as a billionaire, you wouldn't be able to avoid the reality of that. But, you know, with that much money, you could avoid it in the sense that you just go and buy an island somewhere and try and hide from everyone. Then there's no problem, right? You can only talk to so many people in a day. 
And if you're only really talking to the people you've carefully selected who are willing to lick your boots, then no problem, right? Um, and that's where we get the obvious reality from that when these people come in and control governments, as they tend to behind the scenes, one of the aims they have covertly, which would never be publicly announced, would be to corrupt the policing system and the military to the point where there's no answering back. It's all heavily controlled, militaristic kind of hierarchy so that people just follow orders and do what they're told, which means that the people that control these hierarchies at the top with the most money basically can do what they want and they're never going to be prosecuted, They or very unlikely anyway, and they're always going to have these people mindlessly protecting them from other people who may actually be in the right and are just trying to protect themselves. So, no, this is a, you could say, oligarchy or basically just a tyranny. It's dressed up as some sort of capitalist economic system that allegedly rewards success. I mean, it comes down to how you define success to some extent, doesn't it? If if you think success is living in a gated community or your own private island with your own private army protecting you from everyone else who have virtually nothing, then yeah, that's success. But uh, I would say success is a planet where people are at peace, they're enjoying being alive, they're not fighting each other, they're being productive and just generally thriving collectively. Still being individuals, but being open to sharing, being open-hearted, being warm, and solving their problems. That to me is success. That's the kind of planet that I want to live on. And I think that's the kind of planet that we actually need if we're even going to survive at this point. So the video that I made before exposes and explains in 10 minutes. If you haven't seen it, I really recommend watching it. Um, it exposes how this issue of wealth inequality is point one in, in a small list of points that explain why money is evil. And coming from the background of a world which has this degree of wealth inequality with people clearly who don't intend to resolve that. The, the people with the money clearly are not intending to wealth redistribute, you know, other than outside of their own philanthropic ventures, which generally don't really seem to benefit certainly anyone that I know. Um, maybe, you know, maybe they do some good here and there, but I think a lot more could be done if more substantial intentions were set to actually create real balance in general in society. Uh, that isn't what we see happening. So in conjunction with the fact that money is created out of thin air by the central banks, basically devaluing the entire monetary system and people's time and work and everything, um, it just makes a whole mockery of the whole situation that ends up in tragedy with fanboys of it trying to claim like, you know, oh, wow, this system's brought so many people out of poverty. It's complete lies. And in reality, you know, there would be, in my opinion, much less poverty if we just had no money system at all. So... I was quite inspired by what I heard Dan Larimer from EOS and Steam fame say uh, in a few talks where his aim was to make government irrelevant. I think that's an excellent take on this situation. You know, government, as I've covered many times, is entirely corrupt and fraudulent. Um, it's been designed from the bottom up since the beginning, basically to be just puppetry theatre show to give people the idea that they are having a say in the way their lives are playing out, when in reality they really aren't. So making government irrelevant to me is a really nice way of, of finding a solution because, you know, I don't want to be participating in violence. I don't think violence ever solves any problems anyway. The revolutions we've had in the past politically don't ever really seem to go anywhere or achieve anything. They just sort of change the form of the problems and then they get reborn in a new way. So we need to, in my opinion, find a way to evolve beyond these systems of control and denial so that we have something better. And what I came up with in my head earlier on was make money irrelevant. What if we apply that same concept to money itself? How would that work? Um, so what is it that we could do to create a way of living, a way of being, whereby resources are go to the right places, the places that they're needed, capital letters needed, and we define needed by this resource needs to go here so that people can live and thrive, as opposed to this resource needs to go here so that this person can build a massive empire and control everyone else. Um, if we, how can, how can we create a way of being that respects that and that ultimately, inevitably, makes money irrelevant? And if you think about the reality that money creation is a lie as it stands, it is based on making money out of thin air, going to a small minority of people for the most part, you can't really lose anything through getting rid of that. The only people who lose anything are the people who sh who've got too much power and shouldn't have it. Um, so you know, people have got a lot of fear conditioned into them about what would happen if this economic system ended, as if somehow everyone would just suddenly go around killing everyone. 
just because they haven't got some money in their wallet. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. The way you would proceed is to adapt and go to the most important parts of life, which are, you know, food, oxygen, water, clothes, warmth, and that kind of thing, and make sure we establish a way to uh, ensure we're all supplied with those things and doing what we need to do to make that happen. It doesn't need to involve money. So, you know, I think personally that every single person has the ability to shift their mindset away from one of false artificial dependence from uh, the where where we've sort of come from, this world of lies, really, that we've inherited. Um, This concept of lack that, you know, as if there's not enough of everything and we always have to struggle and work really hard to to achieve anything, even basic, uh, which is all manufactured. It's all engineered to be that way. That's not the nature of the earth. The earth is naturally abundant. Um, but if you mismanage the land and deliberately, let's say, in order to weaken the population and you set up certain systems and schools of thought deliberately impl- implanted with ideas that are disempowering, presented as if they're empowering, then you can quite simply create a world where you're the top of a, an artificial pyramid. And that's what's happened. So I think that um, shifting from that old mindset into a new mindset whereby we understand that that's happened and realize that much more is possible than we've previously understood just by shifting our mindset towards connecting more to the earth, to accessing natural abundance and making that available to each other in every way that we can. Even if it's just a small way, even if you just grow some lettuce and you give a lettuce to your neighbor, you know, even just that small act can be symbolic and powerful in itself and um, can inspire change. And the more people that do that, the more normal it becomes. Gradually, you're going to start to tap into that natural abundance again that's been basically hidden from us um, behind corporate logos and factories and deliberately tampered with education systems that remove understanding of these important truths from us. At the end of the day, what's more important? Learning about um, a foreign language, let's say, when you're at school, one of many subjects that we could pick on, or learning how to grow food and how the soil biology works and specifically how to survive you know it, learning another language might help you survive to some extent but not as much as learning how to grow your own food how to live off the land uh, that kind of thing you know you don't need to be able to run a 400 meter sprint quickly you do need to be able to feed yourself and the number of people who pull themselves out of the struggle of life through successful athletic competition let's say is minuscule in comparison to the number of people who could do the same through learning how to live off the land so my suggestion is you know if you really want to be a rebel if you really want to change the world you really want to solve the world's problems you need to get your hands dirty literally and get into the soil and understand the food soil web and how to uh, produce an abundance of clean organic fruit and veg and once you become food independent in that way you can help other people to do the same thing. And that spirit of freedom and liberation and self-sustainability and self-empowerment and connection to the planet, it's, it's very empowering. It's very uh, strengthening for your own will and can give you a solid base from which to proceed rather than feeling like you're having to be dependent on these structures and systems you don't fully understand run by people you probably don't like very much doing things you don't really like very much. So I feel like food is a key way to make money relevant. Um, So in that sense, you know, one of the best things you can do if you don't already is go away and learn about seeds and soil and water and organic food for the plants, uh, compost tea, uh, rock dust, these things that allow us to grow high yields of high quality food for a low cost without any synthetic processing, really, without any factories being involved even. Um, you know, it's not expensive to grow your own food, but you do need to know these certain things, which the mainstream just don't know because it's never talked about on TV because the TV is controlled by the same corporations that produce the synthetic fertilizers who don't want you to know that there are cheaper alternatives that are more effective and safer and more healthy. Um, so, yeah, if you're interested in you know learning more about that, then let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to share more of what I understand and what I've learned from my study of growing food. Uh, still, it's... It's really shocking to me in a way that these fundamental subjects relating to health, wealth, well-being, abundance are completely, they're in the blind spot of humanity. You've got all these activists talking about this and that, this political movement, um, you know, veganism's doing really well, I'm really, I'm glad about that, and that's one of the things I am behind, but 
generally speaking, there's a huge amount of energy being invested into activism that isn't addressing the real points, the real issues, because the people just don't understand them, from what I can tell, and they're blocking them out. They don't want to understand them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, food, independence, learning how to grow food and so on, absolutely key, absolutely paramount. And, yeah, there are people involved in that and very passionate about it, but still it's not a mainstream thing. Um, you know, I think if you gave me control of a TV network for about two or three weeks, I think I could change an entire nation pretty quickly just by changing the programming and educating people uh, on some of these subjects. I think it would be very powerful. So yeah, if you do happen to know anybody who has access to a TV channel or even just a very big YouTube channel um, who's interested in teaming up with me just for a few shows, I'd be more than happy to come on and share some of this information. I know that my Jeffrey Epstein map was shared by a few uh, YouTubers with big followings, Twitter profiles, and it got like 60,000 views in a week. Whereas I put out the same kind of quality information regularly on my YouTube channel and I'll get 50 views, 100 views. Same information, just a different person sharing it. So, you know, I have a problem, let's say, that people don't pay attention to what I say unless someone else tells them that I've said it. Uh, I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just because I'm reach restricted on YouTube or... I don't know, maybe it's my accent. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah. So if you or anybody you know has a way to um, increase the reach that I have on social media, I'd very much appreciate that. It's got nothing to do with my big headedness or ego or anything like that. It's literally, I have very important information, which is world changing, which I'm finding very difficult to get into people's uh, inboxes. So yeah, if you've got any thoughts on all of this, um, if you've got any inspiring ideas, I know there's lots of people who have already thought along these lines already and have started projects big and small from the Ubuntu project through to lots of smaller projects, um, including food sharing and so on, then uh, yeah, do let me know and point us to any links if anything you think might be helpful. And uh, as usual, if you've enjoyed this, do give me an upvote, uh, a thumbs up on YouTube, subscribe if you're new, hit that notification bell on YouTube to get all the notifications. And uh, you can find me on Eureka.org, which is my own social network that now runs following, uh, well, uses the Steam blockchain to reward people for posting. You can actually get paid for posting. Uh, it's a productive um, social network aimed towards solving the world's problems, healing, balancing, and evolving. So you can find me on there and on the Steam blockchain and here and there as well. Uh, so do come by, say hello, and subscribe. As usual, thanks for watching and listening, and until next time, peace.